eating my mind, eating limbs, eating limbs. Eating this is White Centipede Noise Podcast. I'm Oscar Brummel, and today my guests are DDV and AMVK of Club Moral, the legendary and pioneering experimental industrial organization formed in Antwerp, Belgium in early 1981. Consisting of a band, venue, and label, the duo were also responsible for the extreme culture magazine Force Mental. They continue to live and work as visual, audio, and performance artists in Antwerp, where we conducted this interview. A one-to-one reissue of their definitive LP, To All Who Are Interested, is available from Alsat Records, the evolution of Cthulhu Records. A special thanks to Tommy Carlson and Christian Olsen for supplying many of the archival images used in this episode. Hello, Anmi and Danny. Thank you so much for having me here in your home to talk about Club Moral. I am here because this podcast that I do focuses on experimental music, noise music, industrial music um, from past to present. And Club Moral is a huge part of that lineage and uh, history. Um, And uh, yeah, I'm a big fan simply. So I appreciate you meeting me here. Um, I guess what I think we I would like to start off with is if you could just tell me, just starting off about the, about meeting each other in the formation of Club Oral and, you know, in those earliest days, what led to what became Club Oral, which as I understand was not only a, a musical product, but a physical space, venue, label kind of movement in some way. Yeah, we, we met um, um, in a peculiar. We, we knew about each other before. Eh? That was the first mm-hmm. thing we knew. And it, it's a two-hour work, actually, eh? because I'm uh, I'm I'm a little bit older than him, and I was already busy as an artist. And he, but he already started as a student, actually, in the academy in Ghent, uh, performing and having building up a name. Uh, even I mean, it started actually at nineteen or eighteen years old already, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, it's it's just through our work that um, we got interested in each other, and it's by a coincidence that we actually also met in a weird way. Maybe you can explain it. Mm-hmm. I should never. I hear that to us too. Yeah, so we um, we knew each other's work. But not we didn't know uh, each other in person, uh, and that was either through YouTube friends or things that I mean I had seen a show of Enemy in Brussels without knowing who it is. In seventy was in seventy seven or something. Seventy yeah. eight, yeah, yeah, something like that. Uh, and um, yeah. So there were different things, and then I, I I went to the Royal Academy of Art in Ghent to do sculpture, uh, but quite uh, soon, already after like a few months, I was doing performances, and uh, I was already doing performances like for over a year uh, when I was invited to do something, to participate in an exhibition in Antwerp for in a cultural center. And um, you know, I was already uh, like usually it was artists organized events where I did most of my performances early on, and this then this was like the first time in a real museum, and the at the museum they didn't want to pay me, where artists friends and like uh, underground things uh, already. So I decided to uh, move the performance from me to the audience, where the audience actually had to do the performance and I was not doing anything. So the, the plan was to hide myself inside the building and send out the invitations to people I knew, like I always did, uh, to come and search for me. And there were different things. There was a strike of the mail, or there was a strike of the people working in the museum uh, and one friend who knew I had this fake plan to do it 
I was in a bar in Antwerp on Friday evening, and she said, I haven't heard, because I also did a lot of mail art, and she said, I haven't heard from him for a few days, so maybe he's there. He's locked up in the museum, so we should go and find him. So people went the next day, but then the museum was closed, and by coincidence, uh, Annabe was living with a person who worked in the museum. Curator. Right. Uh, yeah, one of the curators. And so they went with the two of them, uh, because this woman had the, the key mm -hmm. to the museum and then and, and uh, it was Annabe who found me. So, so you were you were hiding for multiple days. Yeah. I was there from since Wednesday afternoon and they found me on Saturday. Yeah, because I maybe I, I should be yeah. he was there and waiting for people, but he didn't know anything what was going on. So I didn't know about striking. He said he told by himself. Yeah, there's not many people coming by. What role did the strike play? Because there were what what significance was the strike? No, it was just a coincidence. First, the the so the, 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 there was a male strike. Yeah. So nobody got the invitation. Ah, uh, I understand. <laughs> it was a general, but it was a general. It, I mean, I on a lot of of a lot of strikes at that moment in Belgium. I see. So they didn't. So the mailing, okay. Yeah, I didn't know I was in the building, and I didn't. He was waiting like for friends, but they didn't come. And then uh, the second day, I don't. It's the second day, everything was closed. But he was there without food, without drink, uh, what, water. I was I wasn't going to eat or drink or doubt until they found. Yeah. And so on Saturday morning, like in during the night, I could move in the building, so I had moved to the to the basement of of, of in search of water. And uh, so I was in the band, but during the weekend, and since they had the strike, the basement was also locked, so I couldn't get out either. Again, and he, yeah, we first got like your drink, and then you could, you were wrapped up. Yeah. yeah. And, then I yeah. Out, so. and then I was, of course, lucky that she. Yeah, because you know, everybody, we were like, people were like, there was also some kind of a, uh, someone who lived there. Yeah. Like, uh, Watch, yeah. Watchmen. Yeah, I said he weird. And uh, he was like, he immediately scared, scared and paranoid about, oh, there's someone hiding in it. And I was living here and I didn't know. And so they went, uh, the two of them went, um, and, he, and, uh, and, 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 and then the, 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 the dictator, he, and, uh, but then I said, yo, where can he be? When he's not like in the normal premises of of the of the museum, and I, but, but because I knew there was a cellar because I already attended some kind of a movie that was that people were, were um, filming uh, some months before, and I thought maybe probably he's in in the cellar, and then I went to have a look, and I I uh, I called, I asked, you know, I said, Danny, and then I you know, heard this little voice here. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so it was, uh, but it was just deduction. I thought, yeah, he must be himself. Yes, no. But you hadn't met him before. No, and I didn't was get for invitation, you know? Were you I high... didn't know what, what he, you know, we didn't meet. Were you highly in interested in, in finding him at that point? No, because I thought, yeah, I didn't what a silly person to do. <laughs> Actually, I thought it was, a, yeah, I thought, yeah, I need the, the poor man, I, yeah. What is he doing? And he, oh, I, he, with a lot of bad luck about his strikes, and then uh, I just said, oh, he must be in the cellar. I, oh, when you do your DP, uh, there he must be. And uh, no, because we didn't, and it, it's just, it's it's months later that when he really. First time that we met in person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But of course, I was in, but, but I heard a lot about him of, um, of Annie. Yeah, because she was expelled by her boyfriend. I mean, it's not that I had a relationship with this woman. I mean, yeah, she and she was uh, she she was a very good friend of me, but and she was a big fan of him already for a, a while. And I heard about him, you know, about because my um, uh, one my former boyfriend, um, he also was a body artist, and he was always boasting about him that he was he was he was he was my age, and but he said he's fantastic, he's the best body artist. Uh, so of course I got interested in his work and so, and uh, that was a uh, uh, yeah some kind of a uh, yeah good luck that we met uh, in this point at this point, you know. Yeah. And then after that, how did the relationship progress? 
Oh, yeah, there was no relationship, but the same, but the concept, I mean, yeah. on the same day, I just went home. I lived in Ghent at the time, so I just went home. Yeah. And then we met again by coincidence a few months later. Yes, he, he, he looked for like some kind of a place to, to sleep in network. And uh, his normal place wasn't available or something. And I said, you can come over and sleep in on my coach. And actually, it happened two times and the second time it uh, it's uh, something started. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it, but not very, not very uh, yeah, exuberant of that, anyhow. No. And also, it was, uh, at, I mean, at that point, we, since we got to know each other a little bit better, we knew, we found out that we both had a sort of network, mm -hmm. which was, which was not the same that was set the same kind of network. I mean, I have my performance brands all over Europe, uh, and she had uh, friends also sort of all over Europe, and we both knew that uh, like artist places or artist organized places existed like uh, everywhere in, in, in Holland, in Germany, in France, wherever. Uh, and so that's why we kind of said... Uh, no, that's not... I, actually, it's it's just after we met eh, that we became a couple. Um, it was already planned that I, I, I should have a show in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And um, my friend, eh, Annie, Annie Gentils, she, um, uh, she wanted to join me there. But then we first uh, went to New York because she had to do some um, some visiting of studios in New York. And then we, we went then to, to visit uh, relatives in Toronto and then we went to Los Angeles. And um, yeah, of course I was first, we were first in New York and then in, in, in Toronto and then in Los Angeles. And we saw all these... Um, events going on a eh, uh, free i mean not uh, in not in institutions or at people's homes or yeah. in in lofts and um when we came back uh annie immediately i mean yeah we we didn't we weren't good friends anymore and we came back actually yeah yeah it, it's just a complicated situation but anyway um um she started a bit a big uh, venue here in, in the harbor and um, yeah, I had at that moment I had a boyfriend from Amsterdam that I had to fl fly from because he was he bought actually a girl to shoot Danny. Yeah, it was a very complicated situation and that and so I had to find another place to live. Um, and uh, so I, I found something around the corner here, a, a piece of a factory and um, that's where, where I moved to, and um, I said then to Danny, "Come and have a look," and because I there were three three uh, floors that we that I could hire, and because Danny at that moment had no money at all, and I was having a job. I read to the house and get that. I mean, no money at all. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I mean, not to rent something also in Antwerp. No, no. So uh, I rented then a, a space for Danny, a space for me, and a space to do things together. You see, yeah. And then the space for Danny uh, turned out to be Club Moral, and because and that's where we go in the story again. And you say yeah. that we we knew we had these different uh, these two separate um, um, con uh, sources of contact. We are going to invite people to do things there. But the first thing we, we ever did there was actually a music yeah, event. Allee, it was a, it was a yeah. Yeah. Mm. So Club Morale was the, 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 the place first. Yeah, it, actually it, 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 it was a name invented for everything that we did together. Yeah. And, and we had to, to have a name. Yeah. So that was, uh, and, and we also uh, decided Ali, that it, it had to be a name that could be as much uh, French speaking is Flemish speaking, mm -hmm. and also, uh, you know, I mean, that you could also pronounce in English. Yeah, and that's what he, he said earlier. Yeah. So that was then. Uh, we we thought a lot a long time for before we found a name. But actually, first of all, it was a space, right. and then afterwards, everything that we did together, that we do together, actually, still now. Uh, 
I want to ask about Etat Brut and your connection to Spend. Can you tell me that first performance? Yeah. Uh, I knew them because they contacted me. They knew uh, I was already doing uh, music at the time. And I had a band play uh, and called the Simple Tones mm -hmm. playing during performances. But I also uh, bought like my first synthesizer uh, mm -hmm. around the same time. And we met through a record shop in Brussels where I was selling a, a single of the Simple Tones and they were selling him their uh, cassettes. And so they contacted me and they asked me if I wanted to do a performance during one of their concerts. Mm -hmm. So that was the first time uh, I did something and then they found out I also make like electronic music and then we made a cassette together. That's the split. That's a split cassette. So that was pre-Club Moro as a yeah as a group. Okay. As, a, as a band, yeah, 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 definitely. Because it was a DDV. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So that was the first uh, thing we did. But it was more or less at the same time that I was uh, I was doing performances and I was changing into music. And then uh, uh, I think they played at... Uh, at Club Moral in uh, June or, or something. And then uh, we played, uh, we did a performance in uh, Frankfurt. Yeah. Stuttgart. Yeah. Stuttgart. Yeah. And that's where Anime uh, joined. Was it the to get a performance? Yeah. It was a performance event. Yeah. That's a cool event. Yeah. Heard of it? Mm -hmm. No. Well, Boris Nislomi is like the main, and I'm uh, very, I'm he's, he's the performance, he's the Pope of performance mm -hmm. in Germany, uh, uh, or the grandfather of sure, where, whatever, yeah. he's the most important artist and organizer. And the organizer. Yeah. And he has the biggest archive of performance art in Cologne, actually. Uh, 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 Boris Nislomi, uh, so he first lived in Hamburg, but he organized things everywhere. Yeah. And Das Conceal was like uh, a meeting of performance uh, artists where people were doing performances, but also like talking, having discussions and, and whatever. And so I decided not to do a performance, but to do a music performance where, which was like in a room about the size of this room mm -hmm. uh, with mattresses on the floor and we played like very loud, low uh, electronics. I had some kind of almost physical interference with the audience because the audience was like standing around us. And it you went you two together? Yeah, yeah. we two together and it yeah. It was it was like concerts that lost. No, I didn't do with anything. Yeah, yeah, you played also. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of it you. was the first time. That pretty. I don't think so. Yeah. You are anyway. anyway no, uh, so it was like uh, between a uh, uh, music performance and an art performance means uh, and it all it only lasted like five part ten minutes or so at a bridge sometimes they played on like five minutes down uh and we i think we played 15 minutes something like that what can you tell me about them as a as a group they're brothers right no no no, no. they're two silence uh silence scientists yeah teachers yeah. yes but what, what's weird but i need that's maybe something to tell eh, that, like this performance in in stuttgart it's far away from here right. it's like three three hours, hours right? and they performed like they came not so long before the, the actual performance and right after the performance they went back yeah to brussels they are really they were very extreme people yeah i mean uh very uh, social yeah and because they also they are music it was about hatred and yeah. and uh, despise and so you know yeah. and that's they were very uh was it, uh, uh, very consequent about this thing yeah well they were as a very dystopian yeah, yeah. world they they were very yeah. much influenced by jc ballard mm -hmm. uh Bowles. Uh, that kind of stuff, and they made uh, music actually in a in a scientific way. They were chemists, uh, physics and chemists uh, teachers at uh, school at the university at think in Brussels. Yeah, and so they can they kind of made music uh, with machines mm -hmm. 
in a way, a scientist uses machines for scientific experiments. When someone has this type of worldview or outlook, or even just approach for art, I know it's maybe not encompassing their whole philosophy of life. Do you think that influences then their work in the professional world? Like some people who have a, are artists in the extreme sense, like you say, they're then chemists or scientists or teachers or whatever. Yeah. Do you think that, I mean, do you think that bleeds over it into their contact? No, the actually, sort of professional or real world. Uh, actually, we, uh, I have to say that uh, we were invited for three years ago at the marriage of one of them. Mm. He, he married his longtime girlfriend. She all, they were already together in at that in the beginning of the eighties. But then I we found out that he's very social. Actually, he sleep, I sleep, and and, and um, that he had a lot of friends and and very loving and caring family. So uh, no. Yeah. It's weird. Hey, I was surprised. But they stopped doing music. Yeah, they stopped yeah. during music quite yeah. yeah, right, right, right. And so they just left this probably this uh this world uh that were uh, they they were bringing it it uh, I don't know it was adole adolescent uh, but it in a way it was eh? it, it sure. was of course. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Coming soon from White Centipede Noise, Dry Routine, the new LP by Ochu, splintering mundane industrial noise, following the trajectory of his previous LPs Unproductive and Lemung des Wartens, this time with a noisier edge. Limited to 200 hand-stamped coffee-stained sleeves with an insert. Also now available, new CDs from the Rita, Jim Haynes, Primitive Isolation Tactics, and a reissue of Treyarch's Rosette's Sex Regular, as well as a Sex Regular long sleeve t-shirt. And the long-anticipated White Centipede Noise Podcast Volume 1 compilation is available and shipping to Patreon supporters. This three-CD compilation features exclusive material from 46 artists that appeared on the podcast in the first two years. It's being sold at the low price of 9 euros, but only to paid Patreon supporters. Go to patreon.com slash white centipede noise to get yours while supplies last. Um, can you tell me then how it developed from there into, you know, these releases as Club Morale. Um, a quick question, the, the, the DDV stuff like um, Sound Atlas for Venereology, mm -hmm. did that also happen before? No. That happened? There was, a, uh, actually we, we uh, got into the music scene mostly uh, by uh, Eta Brut, mm -hmm. because they were like a music band only, and they performed at venues in, uh, mainly in Brussels. And that's how uh, I got involved in, in those things. And then we also, because of Club Moral, we kind of quickly knew other uh, venues in, in Holland and so uh, where we had exa exchanged things. First, because of my performance uh, network. Um, and then that's how more or less the, the, the performance turned into half music, half performance. So it was like a, a bit of a, not, not, not always clear. Mm -hmm. no, sometimes I would do yeah. a, 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 like a body art performance and sometimes it would be with, with music and sometimes it would be only music. So it is it's so that, uh, especially in the beginning, I had absolutely no ambition to um, to, well, to to be a musician or I'm not a performer, you know. And so what I did was doing the backing. I, I mean, um, sustain him in, in as, as some kind of a sound in the yeah. back, yeah. you know, or waves of, of, of rhythms and everything. But... Um, yeah, I always uh, liked I, I, to to in, at at my parents' place to to to, to uh, play on the piano. So I I like from the moment when I he he um, offered me that I could also use the wasp. Uh, uh -huh. It it started. Uh, yeah, it 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 was immediately. Yeah, there was a, a new world that was opening for me. You know. Sure. Because I'm very proud actually that um, at a certain point I made some kind of an. A piece, I, I, I should say, and we use it always then afterwards as an introduction of our mm -hmm. of our performances, mm -hmm. and it it even um, 
um, ended somehow uh, on a on a, on a on a group uh, group record of White House. Oh, wow. a compilation. A compilation. Yeah. Uh -huh. Fidel Koch. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. So uh, it, it, that's actually the first thing I ever did on 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 the wasp. But it, <laughs> cool. it was um, some. It's just an introduction of something, not really uh, without any pretension. But um, and I, actually, for a long while, it was only my role. Like I mean, it still actually is a little bit. But then um, it was so that I wrote a lot. Um, I was writing and reading interesting things, noting down things that I heard from the radio or mm -hmm. television. And um, you, then he used that as lyrics or to start yes. off, or, to, or, to, or to have like some kind of a subject yeah. to work on around. So uh, it was more like conceptual. And then the, in the backing, because then he was really a performer. It was not really a singer, you know? Right. I, and like, in, in drum and bass, he would call it a screamer eh? because it was really very heavy, very loud, mm. very. Uh, it was a performance. Very, yes, and very yeah. physical. Yes, and yeah. your vocal style. I mean, I I understand that you know there is this kind of genre or movement of what people call power electronics, and that has evolved into something else. But your vocal style is something un. No one else has done anything like this in this so-called genre of this. Yeah. Very little, little, little effects, if any, and just using your actual vocal cords and the ex expression of your voice and the angular and articulation. And his body, his body yes, also. Yes, of course, of yes. course, of course. Yeah. Um, this first split tape with Etat Brut as DDV has the song "Eating Limbs," mm -hmm. and then you know, then I kind of look as then at then you know to all who are interested as the maybe the definitive Club Morale release, but there are many cassettes and releases yeah. surrounding it and that's like kind of like the the lp um which also has this song and mm -hmm. it appears also on a number of other yeah. songs yeah. uh well can you tell me about the lyrics of the song because in in the split with 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 Eta Brut, you say eating limbs is my kind flesh and blood are in his mind and later it's are in my mind so uh, yeah. this is a very specific small text that you've you've, you've been working I've, with where it comes from and what it means I think it comes from my interest at that time in uh, my early interest in uh, true crime. Uh, uh, at the times, the, 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 the serial killer was not even known. We talked about mass murderers, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, Peter Kurten. He was a mass murderer. Now we call him a serial killer, uh, or. Um, and I think from from reading books about that subject, that uh, that was something that that yeah that I wrote uh, on my own actually, and uh, also because of the repetitive uh, text, and it went very well with some of the things that were in the Wasp, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. And it also that it went like in a sort of crescendo. Uh, you want more, more, more yeah. until uh, I often had in, in the beginning. We often had songs or things that went in this way that you do. It's like a uh, art performance that you do something and the performance stops when you can't go anymore. Yeah. When you can't go any further, either because you're exhausted, you're physically. Uh, worn out uh, until something breaks or whatever. That's how uh, many of my performances uh, evolved or ended, and so that's what I also did in some of some of the music, especially with this track. That it, you go on, you go on yeah. until yeah, you have to stop. They almost a lot of these tracks almost like feel like a mantra or something like that. Like the text becomes yeah. so, it's repetitive, and through your vocal delivery becomes so abstracted that it yeah. just becomes this like... Yeah, the voice, of, the voice uh, sometimes I, I use my voice like an instrument. Yes. And not really, and like the words are, in a way the words are important, but at, at a certain time you forget the words and it becomes like a sound. Yeah. Uh, is sound poetry something that is... Inspired you or, or interested no. you? No. no. Okay. Um, Ali, of course, we had we both had this record, um, no music. Uh, um, 
from, that was um, released in the 70s. I mean, airwaves. Airwaves? These are airwaves? No, the end of New York. I mean, New York, me, I was a visitor and all these things. I was, was a visitor. That's a single, no? Yep. That's a single, no? No, no. Yeah. 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 Anyway, um, um, I, I have to say that I, uh, of course, I, uh, from the 60s on, I have been very much interested uh, in, in music concrete. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and like in, in the 70s, um, I uh, worked as a door. Didn't take the microphone. Ah, as a door. No, sorry. Sorry. Um, uh, uh, at, 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 the, at the Casa in, in free jazz festivals and mm -hmm. so. So. Um, and experimental, um, so I was uh, really, uh, I have to say that I was, you know, for me it was kind of an actual, a, a very normal thing to, to be, to, to be, and I was very glad that uh, I could uh, also perform in this way with Danny. So, um, yeah, I was influenced by but that, of course, yeah. I was influenced by it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And maybe but then I, mean, I said to, uh, to uh, some things, of course, of, of that, that, they, that Danny did, I liked and I cheered. Yeah. And probably that influenced probably yeah. also because he had, he didn't, he just uh, went for it and it, it was out of his guts that he, yeah. but I, um, I, I guess that there was a, an influence, of course. Yeah. But the main thing actually is that we, uh, if we talk about Club Moral as a music band, we uh, we didn't have a music background. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't have any mm -hmm. musical education. No. Uh, also, I, I, um, <coughs> I was like uh, into in in the late seventies, early eighties. I was into the new wave uh, music, uh, and that and Enemy. She had a collection of like. Um, modern uh, classical music, uh, like uh, Schoenberg, Ligeti, uh, 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 all, all that kind of stuff. also, of mm -hmm. course. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we didn't, we didn't really have, like most uh, bands, I never played before that in a guitar band sure. or whatever. Yeah. So we don't have a musical. And for me, the music, buying the, the, the Wasp synthesizer with a friend of mine uh, was like, for me, it was uh, a, like an, an instrument, and I could produce like almost physical things with it. Yeah. Because with a guitar, I mean a guitar or even a bass guitar or whatever, it's always music. But with this synthesizer, you could go so high and so yeah. low that it became physical. Right. Uh, because then I had a friend, and he had this. Uh, I had this big Marshall speaker. And yeah, I mean, it was insane what, what you could do. And, and it came very close to what I wanted uh, when, when you do uh, performance like I did. And it's physical and then it goes to a certain level that almost the spectator almost also feels what's going on. Yes. Mm. And that's, what I, that's how I started using the uh, Wasp synthesizer and into the music so that it also became something mm. physical, the whole thing together. Yeah. And that's why, it, why the, the performance background has always been important in, yes. in what we've but done. If, I don't know if, if it's interesting to know uh, for, uh, my, my history with music. Uh, like when I was very young, five or six years old, I was very good, good in playing the flute. Mm, okay. <laughs> in, in school, and I was really very good. Like the recorder, this, this kind? No, or, no, or just... This? L or, like um, block flat, yeah, 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 uh, like yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, the wooden, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, and when I was eight or nine years old, my mother had this fantasy of having like the trap family. Yeah. You know, I don't know yeah, if you know yeah, it. Yeah, sure. And um, we we were supposed each of us has had to be have an instrument, and I wanted actually the piano, but mm. uh, the the teacher said that my fingers were not good enough for it. So uh, then I so I had to play guitar, mm -hmm. and uh, I didn't like the guitar at all. Okay. I actually, you know, I, I did it, of course, but you do what your parents t tell me, and I was there with me, my uh, guitar, children's guitar, of course, yeah, I was eight, uh, nine, ten years, and then uh, you know, I, when I was 12, my young sister just sat on, on the guitar, so it's broken, that was the end, so, um, 
Was it exciting then to get back into this uh, opportunity to make yes. music and then also yes. start something so powerful? Yes, but I wasn't aware of it, but actually yes. Just when he said, okay, you can use the Wasp as well, that was immediately, it, I, it was uh, fantastic, yeah. 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 Were you in touch with, I mean, I know Etta Bru and, and some other Belgian artists um, that are very closely associated with you, but were you also in touch with like kind of the international or, or other European uh, artists that were starting this type of music at the same time, White House or people in the UK? Very, yeah, very soon I got in, uh, I got in touch with uh, Paul Hurst. Mm -hmm. Not so much, also William Bennett, but more uh, after Production. a while, uh, yeah. Paul yeah. Hurst. Uh, who did like the, the the design and organized the shows and made the films for uh, uh, that were played during White House concerts, um, and I, I mean I also corresponded with, with William Bennett because they were also uh, uh, kind of interested in the the scandalous aspect of performance arts mm -hmm. like uh, Hermann Nietzsche mm -hmm. and stuff, mm -hmm. uh, but they didn't know much about it. So and I was like. The time uh, in, in the ground, an expert. Uh, an expert <laughs> yeah. of you were in the kind field. Of things yeah. Because, yeah. because I saw uh, performance, or I met, or I knew some of those uh -huh. uh, people, um, and so that's how how we got how we got in touch, and and uh, I corresponded a lot with uh, Paul Hurst, and uh, they invited us for the Equinox Festival, and then we invited them to stay in Club Moral for a while, and all that uh, so that's uh, I knew the the like the the landscape mm -hmm. around com organization mm -hmm. uh, Philip best uh, I corresponded with we're on we're on one of his cassettes right. uh, like uh, later on uh, condom or um, Gary Mundy mm -hmm. uh, so yeah we knew uh, those people and, and, and are, also and, yeah, at the time the because uh, which is uh, kind of important in yeah. 1982, we started the magazine Force Mental. Exactly. And that's, of course, that's how the range widened, uh, because Force Mental did not only have art, but it also had uh, music uh, information, but also other, I, I mean, science yeah, things. Yeah. And so, yeah. Uh, yeah. Or we published, we were the first to publish Peter Sotos. Wow. Um, so it was a it was a wider uh, range and more people uh, got in got uh, we got in touch with more more more. People. Yeah, maybe I can add uh, something to it. That of course it was a really immense world, you know. Sure. I didn't. They didn't have any contact with me. These men. No. Especially like White House, they didn't want to speak to women. Actually, okay. you know. And you had Mary Doubt, that was, yeah. that, that she, we knew her, that was the only woman. And then, of course, Christine, Christine no. who, who was the partner of, of, um, of Paul, Hurst, Paul Hurst. Yeah. But for the rest, uh, it was really a men's thing and uh, women were really um, not part of the scene. Eh? Yeah. That's, yeah. Do you, um, yeah, I mean, so that's obviously the, the subject matter of a lot of that music is very, you know, misogynistic and, and violent yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, and stuff. But... Did you feel like that was actually then carried over into the personal? Yeah. The personal? Yes. With, with their attitude, their attitude. Their attitude. Yeah. Probably, of course, because I think a lot of these uh, men, uh, violent, eh, who act uh, very asocial and violent, had a very small heart in, <laughs> in, 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 inside of them. Eh? That's, uh, that's always that's actually the, the fact. And I knew that because I was actually much older than. I mean, especially at that age, someone of 32 or 33 years old, and when you're 21 or 22, mm -hmm. that's an old person, you know? So, older. Uh, older. You all know, it was actually, some, yeah. some people were, because I looked uh, younger, were really shocked when they heard that I was so old. Sure. Because at that, those times it was really, maybe it's not so much now anymore, but then was really someone who was of that age, that was really another war. I mean, that's really something we have to fight against, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. um, you know, it was a real... Uh, it was, you know, sometimes really difficult also yeah. for me, I have to say. But I had, of course, my own... I, I, I had my my things that I, I was doing on my own. Yeah. Because I, what I wanted... Maybe it's also interesting to know that um, I, I, I have been trained like a, um, um, a graphic designer. Mm -hmm. 
And um, at a certain point, I, we, I got to know these, these group of musicians, scientists, performers uh, from the university here. It was in 72, 73, 74. And um, soon they started some kind of, an, of a free space for art in, 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 in the cradle of, of the university. It was, it was the Car uh, Car Center. Mm -hmm. And they, they actually, they invited like Robin Gristel, then still Kong Transmissions. Mm -hmm. And so, so um, they were very ahead of everything. It was fringe theater, mm -hmm. because Kong Transmissions actually they started as fringe theater, as mm -hmm. theater, as a theater group. And um, yeah, they also had a magazine and um, I, they asked me to do the, the, the layout. But um, in the beginning of the 80s, there was this thing going on here in Belgium that there was a new right coming up. And um, then we got to know each other and then they had a special... Um, we, we decided then, it's not, we decided then with, with this magazine Ed, um, that we would do a special issue on the, the, the appearance again of the new right mm -hmm. in the region here. And um, yeah, Danny, with his... Um, contacts with White House, he asked for a contribution of White House and um, they sent in some kind of a, a, a piece called um, The Most Violent Music of the New Right mm -hmm. and it was actually a text that they took from um, the, the National yeah. Front or something. Eh? Yeah, it was a sort of a rewrite. Rewrite. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, but thing. this, of course, this, this made some kind of a big fight in the in, in the university, uh, in, in the cycle of the people who were deciding about the magazine. And um, yeah, it, it just, um, it, it went so far that they stopped the magazine mm -hmm. because there was not a... And then sooner, sooner, uh, I have to say, I always li like to make, uh, also the, when I, in 76, the first thing that I ever did was make publications. Uh, I, I, I started with, with doing actually, uh, publications of myself. Mm -hmm. So uh, when we stopped then, when I, st I couldn't make like the, um, the layout for this magazine anymore, and we, st we uh, then started doing our events in Club Moral, um, we just said we are going to do a magazine of our own. And I was working in a factory where I could use like the repro camera, it was not like with, it's not like with a computer, it wasn't like with a computer, it was then very old style still in eh? with the layouts mm -hmm. on, on paper yeah. and so so i could use these machinery in 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 the in the break and at mid mid midday break eh? because it costed a lot of money when you would would do that so that's we had the practical um the practical um possibilities and we had a lot of content that we could and we could offer that also to all the people who were performing or were having an exhibition, that they had the paper and they could explain what they were doing. So it became a very intrinsic part of uh, what we were doing together in the 80s. Yeah. This magazine. The name Club Moral and, you know, the fact that it was these multiple different arms or limbs of, of media and art and everything coming together and the topics and subject matter was so extreme and the performances were so extreme. Can you identify or talk about what, what was it that Club Moral, I mean, the name Moral implies a lot. Was there something specific or vague that you guys were just wanting to show or, or say or explore that was just, because this is, these, these topics still exist kind of outside of the typical art realm. Usually in, well, in the art realm, I feel like there's oftentimes a, in, in a lot of the art world, there's like a, if you're dealing with topics like this, there's a, a necessary need to like put a very clear stance on it or, or, or kind of position. Um, but Club Morale and of course bands like White House were very ambiguous in some way or, or very vague. Yeah, I think there's there's a big difference in uh, using uh, symbols, uh, imagery, uh, whatever. Uh, in in every sense, I mean, in, in, uh, sound, image, uh, action. 
uh, that we, <coughs> Club Moral was like a, uh, basically a free place where you could do whatever you want, basically. And we, the, the space and the magazine was like a space that we claimed mm. where you could do those things. And um, not uh, promoting uh, like Nazi uh, stuff or whatever, but it was possible to use the imagery and do something of your own with mm -hmm. the imagery without uh, promoting or uh, supporting or whatever. That was that's uh, uh, it's very difficult to explain. Uh, but that's the basic point, actually. Sure. There's not, there's maybe not I, I have to add something. Because um, actually, uh, we, I said we, we have been thinking a lot about the name. And then at a certain point, I found this little thing uh, in, in a trick badge. shop, a yeah. badge of uh, Club Bar Balmoral, you know. And um, what I did was, it was with, with this little, oh, you know, that, uh, what I did was uh, with, um, with um, pencil, I, um, I just uh, erased the ball. And because um, it, it, our, both our works, uh, our, our, what are, we are were talking about in, in, our, in our work was about uh, go, going to the limits of good and bad, mm -hmm. you know, and not choosing um, not choosing a, a site, mm -hmm. just the limits. That was it. That's, that's really that's what we what was like. Danny also in his performances came with, was also until exhaustion. Yeah. Like, until when you would go further, you would die or you would like have to go to hospital. Yeah. So. But, or but people would go away. Yeah. Right. People would go away. Yeah. And and of course this this what there was this thing like. Um, and I don't know if, if that it is the same case with you, but when I was a kid, I thought it was very weird. We are raised as Christians, eh? and at a certain point, you could, could in school you could choose between um, religion and moral. Oh, like a, no. like a court class. Yeah, an, mm -hmm. another class. Yeah. And but I thought, what is then the difference between? I thought religion was moral and moral was religion, mm -hmm. and. I thought this what, what is what is this weird thing? And then all there was is also in the sixties this thing about uh, Club Mediterranee. Have you ever heard about it? Yeah, it was in the sixties. It was with with uh, uh, the, 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 the sexual sort of... revolution, mm -hmm. and you had these things, these centers in France and Spain, and it's what, like what, holiday uh, holiday, but it really pointed on sex. Mm -hmm. And like young kids from 16 years old, you can. And they had this, all this system that you had to wear some kind. I mean, yeah, with 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 coats and th that you were available that mm -hmm. day or for. Yeah. Anyway, it actually mm -hmm. is something that worked on your imagination yeah. when you are 12, 13, yeah, yeah, yeah. 14 years old. And I knew actually people who went there and that, wow, wow. But then it was like some kind of a. It it was uh, it's actually you know the books of Huelbeck. Yeah, I've yeah, never. Yeah. Yes, yes, one, yes, yes, one, yes, the, yes. the particle elementaire. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about these kind of things of the sixties, you see, and it was like it was free and it was about sex, but it was a, there was something about it. Yeah, anyway. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. It was not as. And it was for the rich and spoiled. For the rich and, yeah. and the spoiled and and. Yeah, there was something about it that you didn't like, but you could not express it. Yeah, and I think that's off. in that name. Yeah, you know, um, I think I had it, and I don't probably you had it too. That I, uh, I didn't know so much. Yeah, about I, it I, I, of course, it. I'm, I'm, I'm almost eight years old. So it was part of my education. Eh? Mm. You had like um, Serge Gainsbourg. It was yeah. all about sex and sex and sex. But but then in such a way that it it, it was. A compulsive thing. Yeah. You see? I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Abelian. Yeah. Abelian, then we don't have to say more about it. And that's that's all what that's what you feel about it. Probably I cannot speak of course for a White House, but that's what you feel in these names and this attitude. Yeah. And um of course I have to say like like um a lot of the, the texts that Danny published made for Force Mental, I couldn't read them because they were so violent and they were so I, I thought they were horrible, yeah. but I thought it was good 
that it was written and that it was printed, yeah. you know? Yeah. Because there was this vague thing going on in the beginning of the 80s, this capitalist uh, mounting, eh? because I'm raised actually with, with this, this, um, the, the thing of, uh, we were then students in the academy here in, here in, of art here in, in, in Antwerp, with, with this um, report of the Club of Rome, you heard about mm -hmm. before me. Eh? And, um, but then eh, you, we, we met each other also, you had like punk, uh, new wave. And then all of a sudden you see these young artists who are really into money, being becoming managers. Mm -hmm. And what we did was just being or, or giving an antidote to this thing that was this ca new capitalism. And I need that's that's what that was really our thing. Yeah. And also you had like the art galleries who became more commercial, mm -hmm. there were more mm -hmm. private uh, yeah. galleries and so. So we wanted to have a, a space where artists could do things that were not possible in a gallery. Yeah. Like one of the, the first exhibitions we did was a communist uh, guy and he made drawings of uh, state police on the floor and then during uh, with uh, meat on on top and then during the opening he threw a lot of cocktails inside the space between the audience well <laughs> dressed so everybody in, dressed, was out of dressed course in military dressed in yeah. military gear and shouting he, he yeah. attacked yeah. his own drawings on the floor uh, so that were kind of things and and yeah i mean we we also we we often had like uh, and, and immediately the police yeah with the first sound check, the police, yeah, yeah. and with this thing, of course, the police, and also in a newspaper, uh, the, the official communist party taking a distance of this thing. You know yeah. what was happening? <laughs> yeah. We don't have to do anything with it. And you yeah. remember, Danny? Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. So we we were a platform for things that were not possible anywhere else. Yeah. Without, of course, being out uh, scandalous or so. Yeah. I mean, people would maybe think that was scandalous, but we, we never had a real uh, fascist meeting or whatever. Course, yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you feel like the performance style, the vocal, the even the writing, do you think that is in some way to like experience that level of going to the edge or transgression? I mean, I, I feel, mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not the person to speak about this, but I feel like part of the the, the fascination or the, the success of fascism or, or even serial killers or sexual violence is like just this ability to get in this totally unleashed, un, unmoralized state of mind as ecstasy or something. And, and it's not even also always about the politics in the sense that I think the, 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 that's what's fascinating to me about things like White House and, and these even like some, some club morale songs. They, they go into this really fanatical, ecstatic, yeah. transgressive place yeah but the thing is that uh it's easy like you say uh the mind of the serial killer i mean i know a lot about serial killers in, uh, in uh, it's like you transfer into the, and you become the same kind of person like a serial killer without being one right it's also i can I can, I, it may sound silly, but uh, people often ask me, don't you want to kill someone yourself? Uh -huh. And then I say, do you ask an ornithologist if he wants to be a bird? <laughs> yeah. You no. don't. Right, right. But the or ornithologist, he almost goes into the brain of the bird to study how the bird behaves and what the bird does without doing it himself. And that's in a way with many of the things I did that you go into the into a different thing yes to do what you want to do and then you it's all it's also more or less when you do it afterwards you have the cooling down period and you i mean you're not when i'm when i'm violent on stage when the concert is done i mean i'm not violent when i go into a bar right. i don't start fights in a bar or whatever right. uh and so that's the, that's the thing, you have this moment where you focus so much onto something and then what comes out is like some pure energy yeah. or a pure uh, new kind of thing that, that go, it's like an, almost like an eruption of a volcano.
yes. that you know there's lava inside, but you don't know what's going to happen when it comes out. Right. It can go in this direction, or it can go in that direction, or it can just flow in the air and cool yeah. down. Yeah. Tell me about um, some of your performances also, like what physically might have happened. I mean, I'm aware of the recording of like Pro Brain Dunk, the Brain Dunk recording. Can you tell me about that? That uh, performance and experience? And Yeah, we went uh, production, Paul Hurst uh, and uh, other members. There were four of them. They did a tour of uh, concentration camps in, in Europe. And uh, like Brain Dunk, which is near, is not so far away, it's 20 kilometers away from Antwerp. Is one of the best uh, preserved, actually, because it was underground and it was not uh, destroyed or whatever. And so I went there with uh, Paul and Christine, and yeah, it's like I I often have this uh, when I do other kinds of performances too. You're there, and then you say, "Oh, wow, this is amazing, and it, this is impressive, and whatever," and then you have this thing. Well, we have to catch the moment. Mm -hmm. We have to do something here. And that's what basically what we did. We just made a few recordings with a, with a Walkman and they had a shortwave radio. And we recorded a few things there. And then afterwards, I mean, my side on, on the cassette, I re-edited with sounds from uh, that I recorded. And the production side is there uh, 20 minutes uh, or 15 minutes performance uh, there was there any audience no it was just no. just just you yeah you know. yeah yeah sometimes uh, also with normal uh, I mean normal uh, my perform art performance work uh, I've done things at home where nobody was there and I was the only one with the camera making a photo and then waiting at the time you had to wait a week. Yeah. You had to wait yeah. a week before the picture was developed and yeah. you could say, oh, it's a good photo yeah. or bam. I was really fascinated by the performance that was like you stuck a safety pin in your arm yeah. and hit it and walked around with it for like a week. Yeah. Are you a masochist? No, 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 not at all. No? No, 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 no. No, no, I don't enjoy pain. What I what I want is the image, the visual thing, and not because also when I do those kind when I know I'm going to uh, uh, put a safety pin uh, in my arm, uh, I wouldn't say I don't feel the pain. I I feel it, but I don't enjoy it at all. Mm -hmm. Some things uh, I I have to stop because because it's physically uh, impossible, and I mean there's no. Uh, but usually I do I I can fall I, there's performance I, f I fall down the stairs six times yeah I don't get hurt yeah. Uh, sometimes I have a, a bruise or whatever, but uh, pain is not uh, pain is not part of the. But can I ask I a question? Why did you do it then? With the, why did you do that? With the safety pin. Yeah. Why? What gave you the idea to do that? To do something that uh, only you knew and the whole the whole world didn't know. But the element of pain is is still significant because you could do something else like paint a picture and hide it from the world. Yeah, but that's not that's not as powerful. Yeah. It has to be a powerful image. Yeah. And you had the thing of uh, the, the punk attitude, of yeah. course. When when I was much younger, I had safety pins in my ears and so. I, I remember when I was in secondary school, I was like 14, 15 or so, we went on to, with a school uh, study holiday to uh, the United Kingdom. The night before, of course, I had to put <laughs> a safety pin to my ear. <laughs> Just because we were going to do, and I knew uh, punk in England. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, that was also not. Uh, I don't think it uh, does the masochism aspect. Would you ask uh, Johnny Rotten if he was a masochist, or the other guys who had safety pins yes, in their? Yes, they ask their beach, beach, you know. I might ask them, but yeah, but, yeah. but 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 I but think people a... don't associate it with masochism. 
No, but but I mean, there's a certain like perverse nature of this one because it uh, a, a safety pin for, on your ears to say, "Hey, look at me, everyone. I'm cool. Yeah. I don't care. I don't feel pain." A safety pin in your arm that's hidden is like, yeah, it's going to the edge. I mean, really, I mean, it's a fa it's a fascinating image. It's a really just it's like a really compelling image because it's like. And then hiding that from the world, mm -hmm. doing things that you're not going to show, that you're not doing for vanity or for attention. Of course, you document it, and it's it's yeah. a it's a it's a it's a work. But no, it's, I, I have to it. say it's something. I, I think I think it is for attention, Danny, because you you it's, it's not that you, you you're, you're, but oh, yeah. it's not that you hide it. I, 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 yeah, that you keep silent. You 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 out it afterwards. I it. So yeah, it yeah. is sure. to get attention or care or people caring for you. There is this. I, I, it's not that you are a masochist, but you like being like the victim. In 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 like in the image, you like yes. that's that's really an. I, I after all these years, I can living with him. I can <laughs> say that he's he's the best in 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 when when he feels like he's the victim. You know, he's, he's like um, yeah. The victim is maybe a, not a good word, you know, but he that he's the one who suffers. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I don't I don't necessarily re reduce it to oh he's poor yeah. poor him, but I but I but I but it, it's a very powerful image because it makes you think. Well, of course, why did he do this? What did it feel like? And what yeah. did it feel like over this time? You know, I mean, we have all these rituals in religion of people whipping themselves or or going mm. through this pain to feel or all the release, that, release. release or, or to, yeah. to the elevate painting, the paintings of the martyrs. Yeah, I mean, Jesus Christ. Yes, That's yes, the yes. Ultimate. Suffering image. Or, you, or using pain to elevate themselves in some sort of spiritual way. Is it, is it spiritual at all for you? No. The experience of it, no? No. No, it's, it, it's a work of art. And it takes a different uh, courage than, than uh, making a, uh, a big wall painting and, and painting in all black. I mean, I, I can imagine that for a painter it's the same kind of uh, endurance to do this or that, or for sculpture. Mm. Uh, it's this endurance thing, and yeah, for, for whatever reason, I use my own body as mm. material and as tool to show what I want to show. Because I don't think that uh, uh, The, the, the idea, the artwork of putting a safety pin through your arm, you cannot make it in, a, in another context, in, a, no, not, in, a, in another uh, medium. Yeah. But you, you have the, this man, he's American, like who wears this, like this very tight concept. Co Fakir Musafar. Fakir Musafar, mm -hmm. you know him? Mm -mm. He's from, from, from San Francisco. San Francisco, and like he has this, and then his waist is like that. And he also, he like he used to be like some kind of a, a clergyman or so. He, he went to to work yeah. under his under his um, um, yeah, suit. He was there so much. So is it the same as he did? Actually, feel do you feel like? More like uh, Fakir Musafar? No, because I think we he, are. We met him, you know, once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. He, I think he does it. There's like a, a more a masochist sexual connotation to the things he does. Yeah, I think where so. I think he, he does it for his own uh, pleasure. Oh yeah. Where for me, there's no yeah. pleasure uh, involved at all. But still, not pleasure in the not a massive not pleasure in the sense you want to feel the pain, but you must. Get, I want to, to get something from the experience. I want to, not so much for myself, but I want to transfer the idea, mm -hmm. uh, like you have the suffering of Christ in in church, and everybody feels the suffering. That's that's the kind of thing I want to transfer onto the audience mm -hmm. or onto the spectator so he or who the suffers. viewers. He who suffers. Yeah. 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 Uh, do you take care of your body? I mean, uh, uh, do, do, you, do you, you do so many extreme things with your body. Do you do certain things to maintain it or to train it or to prepare it or no, heal it? Or do you I eat don't. very healthy or? 
um, exercise, things like this? No, Nothing. I don't. I don't exercise. <laughs> I mean, no sport. I, I don't do sport. No, but I I walk uh, a lot. I, I I do as much as I can with a bicycle. Uh -huh. I don't. I, we have a car, but it stays in the garage for sometimes two weeks or yeah. so. So I move uh, a lot. Uh, do I eat healthy? Uh, no, not, honey, no. I mean, no, but I don't eat junk food. You used I to, never. Ali, are you used to it? Used to, I mean, and me. Uh, 40 years ago, yes, Ali, I went to McDonald's. Yeah, yeah. It's been. It's yeah. been it's been thirty years since I've been in since I had a yeah, okay. uh, McDonald's yeah, yeah, style okay. yes. uh, or or okay. whatever thing. Uh, uh, we eat French fries, not even once a week. I mean, but it's very very spicy. Eh? Yeah. You used to have at in the morning, but now it stopped a little bit. Eh? Like raw meat with 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 sambal. Yeah. That was his breakfast uh, yeah, for years I mean, and years I and like years. I like spicy food. I've been a lot. And Coca Cola in, and so, uh, and then he Asia. got like so, uh, some kind of a problem with his kidneys, and then uh, it stopped a little bit. No, he mm. doesn't take care okay, of so you're not like, at all. You're not like uh, uh, training your body or or, no. or preparing it for performances no. or, or making no. sure you're you cannot no. limber, no. Or stretching, or, no. or yoga. No. Things like this. No. 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 And and also, uh, what's also important, I never. Um, exercise for a performance mm -hmm. because then it does I mean you cannot you cannot when I have there's a lot of things where I hang upside down right right well if you if you do that you hang upside down but you don't test it before right any of the things like with the safety pin you do it yeah, you just do it. Yeah, right, you right. do it, and and you don't say, ah, oh, right. oh, maybe tomorrow. Right. <laughs> <laughs> or let's have a, a whiskey first, and and or or let's or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I don't use drugs. Yeah. Uh, so, I'm, and I never you you cannot exercise for a performance because since the performance is the 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 physical aspect is like the main part yeah. of it. It makes no sense to right. to try it before. It's the act. It's the act, yeah. And then you experience. Then you know how it goes when you when you're there when you're doing it. Uh, then you know. Oh, this is not what I thought it would be. Sometimes. And that's the performance. And but that's the performance. And then you have then you're there and you have to go through with it. Yeah. Have you ever been in the and, hospital for anything or like no. that? No. Yes. Yeah, I had a bicycle accident. But no, not... and but but you had like in, in the, the, then you had this uh, the iron thing on top of your uh, of your head. Yeah, but that was an accident. That was not part not of a performance. performance. No, not from it was a performance. preparing a performance. No. Yeah, the preparation okay. of a performance. We were moving a scaffold, and a door fell down on my head. Okay. But no. we had the performance hadn't started yet. Yeah. No, that's true. No, no, no. No, I had a I had a very heavy bicycle accident mm. uh, ten years ago, and that's why I'm not doing performances anymore. Okay, yeah. Because I lost the trust in my body. Oh, okay. Mm. Which is yeah, which is very it's it's like uh, yeah, it's very strange f feeling. So that was a big turning point f yeah, for yeah. your art. Yeah, yeah, was yeah, it ten yeah. years ago. Yeah. Almost, almost eleven. Actually, it was two thousand thirteen. Uh, yeah, because um, also at uh, in two thousand twelve, I published a book about all my performances, and uh, I, so I I thought that my career was going to have a boost by publishing the book and having a exhibition and and stuff like that and then i got this uh, accident which took me two years i was out of uh, because the, my foot was like mm. apart from my leg um, and um yeah <clears throat> you lose it's it's like it's healed and everything and i uh, doctors say you can do whatever you want yeah. but yeah it just doesn't work how have you adapted with your work? Uh, or, and how do you feel about it now? I mean, it's been very hard because also in the in the art world, when when you're like two years 
out of uh, out of reach, uh, you're forgotten, mm. and it's very hard to get uh, to get back with things. And then also uh, part physical, but also because as, as I said, uh, I made these big installations uh, like rebuilding a park, uh, 400 square meters, or building a machine that moves in in an exhibition space. Uh, yeah, and and in a way, you have like some fame, but it but it doesn't uh, bring new interesting opportunities. And then I totally got rid of all that, and then I bought a three D printer, and now I'm sort of doing uh, new things that are more. Uh, Size. Physical. Yeah. 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 And also like the like I said, the models I make that they're in, they have to fit in a shopping bag. Right. That's so the rule. I don't need a big transport. I can just go yeah. uh, by public transport and bring my work to the to the place. How do you feel about um, like newer generations or younger people taking interest in club moral and that as that that era like the early era i know you guys are so active as club moral but i mean do you do you appreciate or like when when people will reissue that work and, and yeah, study yeah. it and take interest in it yeah because for, uh, for this exhibition i i asked uh, two students to make a soundtrack i wanted the soundtrack for an exhibition mm -hmm. and uh, i told them they could use all of the club moral recordings uh, and make something new, a six-hour piece. Uh, and what they did, I, I really like it a lot. Cool. Yeah. And they were also very enthusiastic. I mean, it was a good match, although I didn't know them before. I just asked the, the director of, of the space, uh, which was in an art academy, can you find two students who want to make a soundtrack? Mm -hmm. and, that's, and then I met them once, and they did it, and yeah, it was really good. In your art academy environment and in the times of when Club Moral was formed as a club and things like that, what was the reaction and involvement from other people, your peers, your you know um, friends? Was 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 it a big meeting place for for stuff going on? Was there criticism? Was there a lot of criticism? Enjoyment yes. of it? I mean, was it an antagonism? To yeah, it? there was a lot of antagonism. I have to say that uh, we we started with, uh, we, in eighty two with uh, with uh, with the things in Club Moral and we stopped really on, on the regular base around 82 and we were kind of completely isolated. Yeah, a lot, huh? You stopped in 82? No, 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 87. Uh, in 88? 87, 89. Yeah, I said I, we started in 82 and we stopped yeah. in 88. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. Did I say 82 again? I oh, yeah, no, no, 88, we stopped and, and then it just, uh, uh, four years later, it was Died completely yeah. stopped because we had to move, actually. But... Um, I have to say, yeah, there was a lot of, uh, of um, animosity, say, animosity yeah. and uh, also aggression, aggressivity against us. Yes, because people were really convinced. I mean, some people were convinced that we were fascists. You mm -hmm. know. Because, uh, of course, about also the, the fact that we had a logo and that we were like having these manifests and then that we just said what we were standing for. And that was not really how uh, things in the art world at that time or how it was not really the way that artists behaved at that right. moment. Yeah. So, yeah. Did because you... we wanted like a, a, almost like a corporate uh, business. We had, we had a space, we yeah. had a band, we had a, a label, we had a magazine. Yeah. Uh, so... But it was just because, yeah, it's what you do. It, it was just part of an, I, I mean, like you had also Throbbing Crystal who was doing that. There were some people who were doing, doing that too. And, and I didn't have any problems because we were like Fluxus. It's actually also Fluxus, eh? It, it, it's um, in post-Fluxus or so. Anyway... We didn't, it was not a statement in, in, in itself. It, yeah. We just did it yeah. uh, because it was self-evident. And um, we didn't speak about it, eh, Danny, that we... No, 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 it, it was, was not, just something that, something that happened by itself. It was not a itself. concept that we made up. No. And then yeah. it was just something that grew 
organically. And, uh, and from sometimes the, yeah. this stopped for a while, yeah. and then this was more important, and yeah. then it went like this. But I, then... I have to say, from the beginning that we are we are starting with our things, we got a lot of press, also on, on national television, um, and of course that. Um, also makes some kind of an animosity. I mean, I, that's what I think. Uh, like uh, envy or something, or, or I think a sort of envy. Yeah. Yes, and of course it was um, this um, attention from the media. It was because of the um, uh, the, the aspect of uh, scandal. Scandal. Yeah. They all, 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 it was always pointed on the things that were like performances of, of friends of ours who did then things. And they were always looking for like for the most extreme things that they could make television with it. Sure. Yeah. And uh, that was. Yeah. Um, and the other yeah. part was also that we managed to. Uh, I mean, we send out press releases. We would send out the press release to. Belga, uh, which is our Reuters, yeah. mm -hmm. we would send those. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because then, you have to, and, yeah, yeah, because you, uh, that's what the, uh, we have to say. Our audience was, I think, 1% of Antwerp and the rest was from all over Belgium, from France sometimes, Holland, yeah. Germany. Um, and the audience was not very big. Sure. Like we had like non-boy rice who was uh, performing and I think there were eight people or something. Sure. That's how this... Yeah, that's how was, this works. That, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that is how this scene was working, you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Did, did, how did you feel about that animosity? or that? Did, did you like it or embrace it any, at any what? time? The animosity or the... the no, it was because, horrible. Yeah? Yes. Because, I mean, uh, you, but you continued the project as it was. I mean, some people might have said, oh, no, don't think that about us. We're not like this. No, don't, you know, but you guys kept the... Yeah, but the fact is that the more you say it's not true, the, the yeah, more they, yeah, they yeah. don't believe you. Right. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. weird. Yeah. That we, yeah. we tried in the beginning, we tried to defend ourselves. It was no use because the more you defend yourselves, the more they say, yeah, yeah but this... And, yeah, and yeah. still now, there are people who convince that we are fascists. Right. And uh, like, I, I, like, like also, I had a very good gallery um, in, in, in the 80s and so, and, and, and 90s and uh, in, in town. And uh, I saw people really, uh, like uh, when I, I, sh I showed pieces that they were, say, uh, stampen? Kicking. Kicking, kicking my works. So, mm -hmm. dirty fascist and so. It's, um, very um, annoying and also there were a lot of things that we were not invited like especially in france because they said there's this whole bunch of people who were convinced that we were real fascists mm. there were also like other uh, music organization things they, that, that spread they, like the, yeah. thing, the thing and said oh you shouldn't invite club mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah but of course you had like uh, this one uh, who was, you had some of the, especially in France, people who are like very much into these futurist things, who are anti, yeah, they were fascists, eh? uh, futurist manifest, we had them nu weer al, this one from. Le Saint, nee, Le nee. Syndicat, nee, Le Syndicat, uh, yeah. Nee, nog huh? een andere. Oh, ah, yeah. No, another guy. And of course, we knew yeah. these people, we, we, we saw them regularly, and, and then they are, and of course, White House too. They were, because it was so violent, and. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> yeah, there was uh, not so, and we still have problems with it because actually White House once accused us for the fact that they were um, treated as fascists. Treated as fascists. They accused you guys. Yeah. Yes, because we, we put this um, manifest of them in a newspaper, in our newspaper. <sighs> but we asked for it and, and yeah, we asked for something. and They can't come at you. They're, they're yeah. big boys. They, I think they know what they did. They can, they, they can handle it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I was I was surprised. I saw you I saw you perform in Cologne, maybe five six years ago. I was I was surprised honestly that you played like Nazis of the Night because I, you know, this is a this is a very infamous song by you guys and very intense and also Germany is very they don't accept a lot of ambiguity with mm -hmm. that top those topics at all. And you played that song and I was like, oh, that's a strong statement somehow. Yeah, but it's uh, because, I mean, people keep telling us that, it, that it's such a big hit in Germany, <laughs> <laughs> that it's played. I mean, Annemie's gallerist from Berlin, Berlin yeah. she said that before she knew us that they played it in discos. Sure. She so, danced on it. Yeah. Yeah. And still we, we had someone uh, at, my, at, at my show, we met someone 
who's also into the music scene, and he said, oh, Nazis of the night, when you go in, in this, even in, in this techno stuff, and so they, they mix it in between, and says, said, huh? <laughs> it's an extremely, I mean, the minimalism of your, of all of the stuff, I mean, the, the, yeah. the minimal electronics that mm. you provide and the, and the vocals and the lyrics, and the, it's just really powerful and uh, holds a lot of power to this day. I mean, I listen to all sorts of noise music and sometimes noise music becomes like easy listening mm. because yeah. it becomes yeah. like, you know, it's, which, which I don't mind, but, yeah. but sometimes coming back to this early stuff where before this was like identified as a, a genre or something yeah. to do where it was just yeah. it's like listening to early Clumoral is just like, yeah. this is like some of the most intense, like nerve wracking yeah. stuff. Also because of course then noise music, it didn't exist when we right. started. There were just people doing something more or less, but Club Moral does not sound like White House at right. all. Exactly. Not like uh, Philip Best at all. We, we were already different at the time because it didn't come from, as I said, it didn't come from a music background, but from an art background. Yeah. We had a different way of like making a song, so to, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah, a song, you, you wouldn't call it a song. Either. No, yeah. but I you mean, a are. track. <laughs> yeah. Tell me about working with uh, Cthulhu and Willie Stash. He put out the LP. Yeah. And tell me about the LP, how that came about, if that was recorded as a session. Because it seems like those songs have kind of appeared on, on, on tapes and live performances. It, no, so, we went to we went to Mers near Mers yeah. to uh, someone he knew that had a studio, and I think we recorded two or three days. I think we recorded two days. Yeah, two days. And then one day mixing. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember we had the studio for three days. So it was so, recorded like a real band, yeah, kind yeah. of like yeah. studio yes, time. There, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Was On the spot. But all the tracks there. The remixing, there was actually, remixing is a bad, it was just like adjusting the levels yeah. and stuff. There was no overdubbing or, or whatever. You performed just, it live in the studio. We yeah. performed live in the studio. We played all the tracks, like say once or twice. Maybe, most of them only once. Only yeah. once. And they recorded it and then we adjusted the levels until it sounded exactly as, as we wanted it. Like a, a bit of delay or a bit of this or a bit of more of that. And we had a very good uh, technician on the third day, mm -hmm. and and that was it. Did Willie approach you guys about that and yeah. say, "I want to yeah. release yeah. the LP"? Yeah, yeah. I think they came. I think uh, I have to. I think we got to know them when uh, you know uh, Michael Moynihan from mm -hmm. Coup de Grasse. Mm -hmm. He lived in Antwerp in uh, in Club Moral actually. Mm -hmm. Uh, he first came to play at this uh, in vitro event in 1986, I think it was. Yeah, I don't know. Or because he was here in, uh, he lived here in 86, so it was 85. It was the year that yeah. my father died. Yeah. Anyway, and uh, that's how, I think that's more or less how we met, or that Willie came over. Uh, he came to see this in vitro festival. And uh, yeah, that's how it started. But he approached us to do. Uh, oh, he is the one who already was friends with with with. with uh, really? I think he or yeah, yeah, I think yeah. Uh, Michael already knew Cthulhu yeah. Records also. Yeah. What was Michael Moynihan like? Uh, yeah, in the beginning we invited him when he was still very young. Seventeen, I think. Yeah. He was only 17. Yeah, yeah, something like that, and. Uh, I mean, we, uh, since we also had a little shop and we did some distribution mm -hmm. and we exchanged a lot of cassettes and magazines also, we would send five magazines and they would send three cassettes, something like that. Uh, so that's how we, we got to know him and uh, corresponded because he was also making booklets. He was like also sort of a bit of a small publishing company mm -hmm. like, like we were doing. And, his, and he had this graphic style and everything, so we we start we had the idea of inviting him over, um, and then we organized a tour to I mean to to fund the ticket, 
uh, and he stayed here, and then, yeah, he... Uh, he came back then with his girlfriend. He came back uh, yeah. with his girlfriend and lived uh, for about a year, I think. Yeah, here, in, a par yeah. in a part of the building where, in the yeah, factory where... Part of the factory. Mm -hmm. he, he installed a room for himself, and, and, uh, and he, he invited his friend from New Zealand as well yeah. to live with him. Yeah. But it, it was um, it was nice, but it, it, it was uh, like it was not so easy to live with in the end. In the beginning it was nice, but yeah, it's a long time ago. You, you, Why not? You, Why not easy to live with? Hmm? Why not easy to live with? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think he had uh, also it kind of turned out uh, that he had this plan to like start or have part of his organization or company or whatever mm. in as a base in Europe but then he came with his girlfriend and then they had they had a little household and yeah some things he kind of you know, there was kept all to of himself. a sudden he you know, of course we were he was much younger than than me and and Danny yeah. so in 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 you know, with his girlfriend then which who was a very nice person uh, I mean, you know, it was also but difficult they, also of course they had to find out how to live together yes in a, in a, in a, and, in but a then there was different this, part of the world we were then the old ones anybody. and yeah. they were and like there was some kind of an animosity I mean, so uh, yeah. an artificial kind of, of fineness, um, it, it, it turned out very sour mm. in the end. Yeah. And that was a pity, that was really a big pity for, I found. Hey, do you remember? Yeah, yeah. And he also had a lot of plans and everything, because we still joke uh, about it with the thing when we asked, uh, and how about this, you'll see. That was all he said, uh -huh. but we never saw anything. Uh -huh. While we expected him to have like a flourishing practice yeah. of whatever. Yeah. I don't think uh, he stayed here for a year and I don't think he did one concert mm -hmm. anywhere mm -hmm. in, in, in Europe or so. And, or he didn't publish anything. It was also, then he was publishing, he was thinking on this big book about Nietzsche. Yeah, he did it, uh, eh? Yeah, 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 because he did it. I, but it was but before because he gave me one. I think it was at, well, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, yeah. Oh, yeah, nothing right. really, yeah. nothing creative uh, happened. Mm -hmm. yeah, they, he was always working, but nothing actually yeah. came out of it. Yeah. Yeah, it's not so easy, actually. You think you can, you, you are living somewhere and, and um, you are used to do things and you think you can transport this to another country, or, but it's a completely different situation. Yeah. And I think that um, he didn't reckon on that. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a it's a pity that it it stopped like that because we were very close friends before. Yeah, and, and it, also uh, it's different, yeah. of course, if you if you are somewhere for two weeks uh, the first time. Yeah, and then people you have this tour and you yeah. go to Germany oh, and so you nice meet Willy and, cool, and, yeah. yes. yeah. and and everybody oh this is Michael from yeah. Boston oh yeah. wow 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 oh yeah. yeah I know you and this and that and then you're here and then yeah you have to life yeah. and then he became so <laughs> private about yeah. everything and so. So you're like, uh, uh, closed, yeah. closed yeah. about everything. You know, it was, uh, but it's such a long time ago. I mm. don't remember. Any. You met him in between again. Yeah, I, I've, I've been to a concert. Yeah, of one of his newer bands. Mm -hmm. uh, like two dance. years ago. Did you ever, ever meet him? No, no, no. I'm familiar, uh, somewhat familiar with you know Blood Access and his work, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But I know you guys. I know the history, and you know. Um, and you you have a good relationship still with Willie, right? Because the the reissue yes. of, uh, yeah. of yeah. Yeah, the yeah. LP came out yeah. a couple years ago, yeah. which I think yeah. is a big, big uh, important thing to happen because this yeah. was a very coveted, rare yeah, yeah, yeah. document yeah. LP for a long time, and now it's like almost exactly recreated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we wanted it to be exactly the same. Yeah, and it's available yeah. still, and it's and it sounds great. It's, yeah, uh -huh. it's really yeah. awesome. Yeah. So you're still on good terms with him, and yeah, yeah. yeah. cool. Um, what about other reissues? You know, there's been a couple other reissues that have come out. I remember uh, several years ago, maybe ten years ago now, like Trash Ritual put out a CD reissue, and I heard that there were going to be like a bunch. Or I, I was under yeah, the impression that there were going to be a lot. That was that's 
often the plan. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're going to do to do all this uh, again, but uh, and um, we all we mostly agree. Uh, and they did the sound atlas of mineralogy. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then it stopped. I, mm -hmm. Since then, I actually haven't heard from them anymore. He, he's disappeared completely. Yeah. Oh, wow. And then there's this uh, Italian label who, who re-released a, a bunch of production stuff. Yeah. And they also did the... Brain, brain Menstrual, right? Yeah. 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 And, uh, yeah, there's been a, the box uh, from, uh, what's this, this... Vinyl on Demand. Vinyl on right. Demand. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Which of which we have still a lot of covers. If you are interested in the covers, we have, uh, yeah, we have still we have a bunch yeah. of empty boxes. It's in my, it's in my way in my uh, archive. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I can take them back. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you have you know, with, the, with the train. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Depending yeah. on how big they are, maybe. Yeah. 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 But uh, no, apart from that, no. No immediate plans. And then, I mean, there should be. Do you have a, Do you have a good archive of the masters and things like this? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Everything is already, but also everything is on the internet archive. Right. Everything we, we published, I digitized everything a few years, uh, may, or maybe already 10 years ago. Uh, because I think it's more, for us, it's more important that it's available, that it's out there. Yeah. And not so much in uh, making money or right. re releasing, or uh, we're not doing, we're not going to do any re-releases ourselves either. Sure. Some people ask, do you still uh, make cassettes? Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to sit with two cassette players anymore and, and Sorry, cutting, to... yes. yeah. cutting covers and going to the mail and everything. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, no. I don't know. If somebody else wants to do if somebody else wants to make, like Starplot, they made uh, this uh, cassette. Right. Uh, and yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's great. Of, of course, I like it that it, that it happens. Uh, but also when it's with like good people. That you know and when, trust. Yeah, yeah. That they, have, uh, uh, that they also have the same attitude that we want to re-release it because there are so many people who want to hear it and we want to make it possible yeah. for people to hear it. Right. And we don't, make, we don't want to make a luxury product right. of it. Yeah. Also because we want to... We invest more in our visual art yeah. than uh, in re remembering the past. Right. I want to talk about that too, and I want to, but I also want to talk about um, you, you're known to be in touch with uh, at least some like serial killers and people in prison for I don't know. I've been. The, I've been in you've touch. been. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. The main. Uh, the main. Uh, I'm. I'm like known. As the the true crime artist, yeah. Uh, but if I look at it now, or, or in, in in this exhibition, that was a period uh, from let's say mid eighties to mid nineties. Okay. And then it sort of stopped. I mean, I'm I'm still I still read books once in a while uh, about about crime or the, the psychology of of uh, crime. Uh, and I've corresponded, but that stopped. Uh, I think the last one uh, was John Wayne Gacy at the time he was executed, I think 94 or something. So at that time, it stopped. And okay. also, I never used the correspondence in, uh, in work. Yeah. Or I don't want to publish it or yeah. whatever. What was that? I mean, who were you in touch with? Gacy, I, I, heard, I heard that. Gacy and a few Belgian. Mainly two, three uh, Belgian uh, murderers. How, what was the vetting process for that like? Because I've heard like, Gacy doesn't write with everyone. He, you know, how do you yeah. get in touch with him and make him agree to? He writes to a lot of people. Eh? He published his book. Yeah. Uh, they call him Mr. Gacy. Okay. There's many famous people yeah. who wrote to yeah. Gacy. Lux Interior. From the cramps, mm -hmm. but uh, okay. correspondent has also. I have two paintings of Gacy also wow. uh, that I bought, like so many people bought. Yeah. I mean, uh, and uh, this uh, uh, black TV host uh, uh, who was uh, famous in the also in the nineties. Yeah. Um, Whoopi Goldberg. Nee, nee. Uh, nee. Uh, 
hoe heet nou, ze? Nou, to- een talkshow host. Don't, uh, Oprah? Ja, yeah. yeah. Oprah Winfrey. She corresponded with Gacy. Really? Yeah. I mean, a lot of uh, university professors and whatever. Yeah. They published his own book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? I've, okay, I've seen I've, I'm so aware of it. Yeah. So, I was interested in him, in, in him because, uh, of course, he was a serial killer and he made art. Right. Because I, uh, there's this theory um, that you have the psychological profile of the serial killer. It's a schizoid type, in, known in psychology. And it has uh, scientists, like inventors, is one category. Uh, Motiveless criminals is a category. Religious thinkers is a category. And artists, they have the same kind of psychological profile but the outcome is different. Mm. So I did a lot of research work on that in, in books, in FBI profiling stuff and, and whatever. And so that's why he was an interesting subject to me. And then I write him and I'm, 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 I just tell him I'm an artist from Belgium and uh, maybe I include, uh, I include a few things that I do, like I do performances. Uh, or I make art that is not really popular, uh, and uh, this is my idea that there that we uh, or uh, or artists and criminals have the same kind of psychology. Do you want to write? Mm-hmm. Do you want to correspond mm-hmm. about that? You can ask me whatever you like, and I can ask. Uh, I'm not interested in the details of a crime at sure. all. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, and then you start writing. I, I was, I, 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 uh, I wrote to him, and then it went okay. And then uh, I always got a letter from his lawyer that I was not allowed to talk or publish or whatever uh, of the correspondence or whatever. And then he publishes this book and yeah. he asked me <laughs> okay. for. Uh, and you're in the book. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my letter is also in, in in the book, but he never asked me to put right. it in there. Uh, and then in the beginning he said like oh my talent is a gift from God eh? but then he sent out uh, press releases he sent out mailing lists with with catalogs for his paintings to Mm -hmm. buy they got more and more expensive so I got into an argument about him what about your talent is is it not more a commercial thing because you're so you're getting famous now as the painting clown in prison yeah and uh, so we got a bit in, into an, an argument, and, yeah, and then he was uh, executed. So, what sort of things but, did he ask you? Did he did what? What did much. he say that he wanted from you? Not much. Just not maybe much. buying paintings. Not interested and... in other people. Yeah. No, not yeah, really. yeah, yeah, not really. Yeah. Because he couldn't have, and I, I yeah. The thing is that I felt actually uh, in his replies because I confronted him with the fact that his talent from God was not really a talent from God because his talent was also not so... Yeah. He was not a talent at all. <laughs> it, was, it was just a commercial uh, he, he idea. Was not, he was not a really big talent. Uh, and then uh, I felt in the way that he replied, you should also think it's by letters, eh? so it takes a he, month sure, before sure, sure. you have a reply. Eh? Uh, and then at, at a certain point, I felt how he tricked these youngsters in, in, the, in the handcuff trick and they were tied to a board and because he was very uh, manu- manu- manipulative. Manipulative, right. yeah. And, and after a while, you, you felt it because he, he couldn't get anything. I don't know. He didn't ask for, for anything, but you could feel that he didn't like me uh, challenging criti- him, criticizing yeah. him or challenging him with things. And he got really, uh, yeah, fed up with that. Yeah. And then I thought, aha, this is how it goes when you have a, a 17-year-old kid in your living room and you, you, you drink something or you smoke something yeah. or whatever. And before the guy knows, uh, let's do the rope trick. And yeah. I, I can imagine his... Could you feel something through the paper like, like a... a, a an aggression yeah. or a danger, or of course not, it's someone very dangerous. far away. Yeah, but like it's very far away, and and even with the one with the ones, I mean, enemy was more frightened when I was yeah, corresponding. They were with the, right, damn it. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I, they, 
There but was one who uh, was is also dead or already, eh? and but and and he 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 sometimes he got uh, permission to call Danny, eh? on the phone, on mm -hmm. the phone, and to, I remember eh, an afternoon Danny was not home. He calls and uh, he, he asks, yeah, oh, it's he appeared. What's his name again? Uh, Michelle. Michelle. It's here, Michelle. Bell. Michelle, um, can I talk to Danny? And with a very low voice, mm -hmm. very masculine low voice. And uh, I said, no, he's not home. But immediately his, his voice changed. And uh, I said, oh, he's not home. And then he started to say things to me. Oh. And um, it was horrible. It was uh -huh. horrible. And I had to, to lay down. I had to say, oh, Michel, call back uh, when he's home. Um, but but um, and then I, uh, is he the one also who was really so much in favor of my art? And no, it's another one. Another one. He, 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 he wrote then at, at a certain point to Danny, Van, oh, Danny, he didn't like Danny's art. I said, oh, for Danny's art, hip hip hooray for enemies art. <laughs> I was a very, very big fan of all these women images and sure, everything. Sure. And, uh, <laughs> and, but then at a certain point, he had also a, some kind of a relationship with, with um, Orion. And uh, that was after these two events, eh, all the events, like this one encounter with the, what that was really frightening. I have to say, it was really frightening. Yeah. Like he was like almost like raping me on the phone. Yeah. And, um, but I don't remember anything of it. I, I thought the, the, it was so frightening. And um, so at a certain point, this Horion, eh, he was going, like he was a very dangerous man. And um, he was very dangerous, he was also dead. And he, he escaped. Tried, escaped. He escaped once and I said, oh, he will come. Because these people, they don't have a lot of places to go to. And I said, Sooner or later, there's one here. There's because we already had sometimes visitors. That's one of the reasons we closed with Club Moral yeah. because we also attracted sick people. Sure. See, so I said, one Danny, when you don't stop, you have to stop with this because one sooner or later there's one at the doorstep. Eh? Yeah. And uh, yeah, then I don't know what I don't. That's all I can say about it. But I, it's not that I just I got angry at Danny and I said, "Yeah, you're playing with fire." Because you know, my I once had Ali, this boyfriend from Amsterdam. He was also a criminal, and uh, I don't. I know there's nothing sexy or or good about the criminal mind. You know, it's just like people they have like this this thing with shortcuts. They have a problem or they want something and they see a, so they see an opportunity and they take it. Yeah. And that's no matter how. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's violence and it, it, it comes with violence. And um, they have no notion of good or bad. It's, no, it's not, not even moral or so. Yeah. It's just, I, I do this, I have the opportunity, I do it. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it's also with that background of, the, of course, that I said, I don't, because we had a lot of problems at Danny, we had a lot of problems to have a, 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 a harmonious life after this René bought yeah. his gun, eh? Oh, it took t two years before we had like a normal life, yeah. you know? And um, I mean, you have to be like very strategic and, 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 and uh, how can I say, you have to have a lot of patience and you have to be very, yeah, you have to know in what kind of moments you have, what you have to do or not to do. Right. And then things can lay down and just yeah. water away. But um, like at a certain point, I was really angry that Danny was uh, like, I thought he was playing with fire yeah. at a certain point. But then, you know, it just, um, it just. Was he caught? Stop. The guy who escaped? Yeah, yeah. Immediately. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So somewhere in Holland. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but the thing is also, I didn't, when I correspond, I didn't sympathize with them. Yeah. Or definitely not with what they did. Right, right. But they were like subject matter. You did you have to give them some sort of like <sighs> mm, symbolic, like not praise, but kind of make them feel special no. or or? No. Probably yes. Probably they. Maybe it was not in the in te your intention, but they felt like it. Like the, this big project that you did in Turnout. 
Ja. I can I can imagine eh, that that this man there. was really very proud that you did it. Eh? Everybody could see the whole, the big thing that he made on the wall of a museum. It was it was like a cultural center next to the prison, and he made this very huge thing. It was fantastic, and of course, and he he was like the prison um, the, the the people who the, the the people who take charge of the prison. They had to, like, right he was yeah. very restless and, and yeah. they had to uh, incarcerate him because he wa he got like too much, uh, you know, he be became very violent out of it. Allez, excited, excited, yeah. excited, uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, of course. Then you don't have to uh, yeah, yeah, minimize but I mean, it, eh? No, 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 I'm not minimizing it. But the thing is that I'm not sympathizing. I'm, I, I, will, I would never... Because I had arguments with people also who thought, oh, they should let this guy go free. Where I would say, no, 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 you can't let him go free because yeah. something will happen uh, yeah. again. again. Immediately. Yeah. Because, uh, because I could tell from what they did, how they behaved, and yeah, what I knew. That, but there was never any uh, aggression or so in, in the letters. Or yeah. there, was, there was no threat, not... Definitely not to me, but not to other people or so. But you could feel that there was uh, that they would that one of them, the guy who escaped, he said, "I'm uh, way too long in prison because there's people who've done much worse things than I did, and I'm but I'm always the the devil. Yeah. Uh, when something happens, they always have to refer to me because I'm like the iconic." Uh, it was very bad, ugly, very bad, ugly. Uh, bad thing. Yeah. Very uh, ugly and then moustache and a very and he had no chin. It was a little bit like Dracula, you yeah. know. It, and moustache and then these uh, glasses. So and, and then his hair, his seventies yeah, hair. That, yeah, I mean he that looked that was really uh, very weird. Because he he had an accident yeah. and it was a policeman who, uh, as a kid, drove, and the the guy drove over his head and he he, he had uh -huh. his two eyes. On a different level, so that's why I always wore sunglasses, wow. and to cover the scars, he yeah. had long hair, wow. uh, and that's what why he was such a revengeful yeah. person, yeah. full of revenge. That yeah. I thought that, I mean, if he's basically he's a nice person when he's inside, but don't don't let him out because as soon as somebody puts a straw in the wrong direction, he just pulls out a gun and shoots him. Yeah. You know how he started yeah. his letters? I climb in my pen. Yeah. I climb in my pen? Yeah. <laughs> to write you. Yeah. <laughs> is that a normal yeah, phrase? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, for children. For uh -huh, children. Okay, okay. in the pen. No, not yeah. for children, like for people. Yeah. For, it's uh, like a... Yeah, so, so. He climb in the pen. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's like a very, uh, I don't know. Cheesy. A cheesy okay. way of saying I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm 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 taking my pen and I write to you. So it's I climb though, in the creepy. pen. Yeah. Very, yeah. very very creepy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so you <laughs> closed down Club Moral also around you you mentioned it, people people were Yeah. It was getting late weird. 80s, late late eighties. Was people that the reason? Weird, but yeah. also because there were many other opportunities. Yes. Mm -hmm. The, the, the art, the art uh, atmosphere changed. I mean, there was a lot of opportunities for young people and for yeah. extremer art to be uh, no, no. And then in uh, well, in nineteen ninety one or ninety two, I started teaching in Ghent in the mm -hmm. Cask, and um, the last things we did was actually with students of the Cask. Again, oh. eh, because you were a student yeah. when we started, you were yeah. also a student of the Cask, and. Yeah. Um, we showed actually most of, of people in the beginning, people who are actually students of Cask Gent. And we stopped also with the performances of some people in my, in my class, from my class. Yeah, that's nice. I also read you did some research with artificial intelligence. Yes. Right? Can you tell I, me? Research. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, it's just uh, this group of, of scientists that I called, uh, st uh, talked about in the beginning in the 70s, uh, one of them. Um, was um, um, into uh, knowledge representation with specialty uh, artificial intelligence linguists, and um, in um, seventy six seventy seven he wrote his doctorate on a computer simulation of parser, 
and I was already making drawings then of machines. I have always been and, and influenced by what, what we were talking about uh, when we when we gathered. Um, and uh, yeah, he asked me to make some kind of a drawing session to make an animation of um, to uh, make it more for for the, the jury to make it more appealing because these people they also made electronic music and um, these um, scientists and they had this very nice um, and uh, funny um, electronic thing walking on the moon and yeah, it was boom 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 it was very nice and the um, yeah we made on this movie together. Uh, in 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 the museum, in 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 the university here, uh, on a machine that doesn't exist anymore, but a machine as big as a room, yeah. and it was like that, and um, uh, I have to say that um, uh, of course these Luke Stales, eh, that with whom I, then I got, I, I I still have contact with him now. Uh, he was very much interested in art in extreme art also. And um, I was very much interested in everything that had to do with the future and with everything with, the, with, with, with science fiction and so. And so for me, that was really science fiction, what they are uh, working with at that time. It was cybernetics and artificial intelligence. And um, yeah, we evolved um, uh, at the same time. Then he went to MIT mm -hmm. in the beginning of the 80s. And in, eight, in 83 or 82, he, he started um, this laboratory of artificial intelligence here in Brussels. And I could go, go and work there on the machines on free hours and it, at night or when, when there was no students in the laboratory. In which years? Uh, from it started in 82 until 88, 89. Okay, so this yeah. is like early, well, Yes, and, and I had the opportunity to, to go all over Europe to, to these conventions of artificial intelligence, which was, of course, I mean, it was not, um, yeah, it was artificial intelligence, but it was about language, about time. And then you had all these speakers coming from all, the, all over the world, all, also the people who then later started Silicon Valley and so. Mm -hmm. And they were really like uh, acting and, and, ch and, and they were like, very arrogant, <laughs> most of these people, really like we are the new rulers of yeah, the world. Yeah. And it, I mean, it's true. Yeah, it, Unfortunately. It, 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 was tr it became true. Uh, but it was really weird as an artist to be in that um, to be environment. In, yes, were you like one of the only artists in that? One, so mostly I was the only artist. Wow. So and I, I got very much inspired of like the like the processes of their ways of thinking, and I used that in my art. That's uh, I used actually their um, their methods to make art. That was what I did, and. Um, yeah. It's, um, it, uh, things came out of it, and still people. I, mean, I have to say, I, 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 I a lot of um, most of the time, people for at least for ages that they said this is not real art, it's bad art. What I made, uh, eh, what was it again and again? So I still have a lot of things from that this period. Luckily, we have a, a person who is. Um, who became quite rich and who, who bought a lot of works of Danny and of me of that period, so we we can leave we can live on a more easy level. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it, it's um, still I still meet this person and it's still interesting. But of course, uh, in the middle of the eighties, um, then it they somehow there was somehow was a somehow uh, they a blockage in the whole region of. Um, the, the, the artificial intelligence um, uh, research because they, uh, their approach was uh, not right at that moment to make intelligent machines. Mm -hmm. And then it stopped and then they, they renamed it into artificial life, but then afterwards it started to take the name again of artificial uh, intelligence. Mm -hmm. But it was, uh, you know, it was very um, special to be Really at the core and and be at at uh, to be there as a watcher and uh, for sure and um, yeah it was um, very privileged I was yeah tell me about your most recent work sure um, yeah what I did was I made this huge book of all my texts 
especially also on artificial intelligence. I made a lot of, of also um, publications that I wanted to make, but that never got an, a, a, a publisher. So I put everything in these books. It's 700 pages. And um, you know, it was uh, then it's finished. The English version is finished, was finished at the half of January, but it isn't published uh, yet because of the problems of problems with the publisher. Mm -hmm. uh, the publisher got thrown out of his own publishing, uh, you know, uh, publishing uh, you know, how company. You company uh, you know, anyway, uh, a very uh, nasty thing. But I'm. I'm and, and uh, also, like last year, I have been involved in, in a, with a gallery, a very high-class gallery, um, for 40 years also. Mm -hmm. the, actually, mo uh, the same period as I know Danny. And um, he stopped from one moment on the other, St. Wick Gallery. Mm -hmm. And um, I am a very... In, I'm in an in-between period, I have to say. Sure. I, I have to because I have, of course, my still my, the same attitude towards towards uh, the uh, life and and uh, society and the art business as I always had, but now I have to reposition myself, and mm. uh, it takes time. Sure, it takes time. Yes. What about you, Danny? Now that you have retired from performance, are you? I mean, I've seen you've talked about some of the things that you are doing mm. nowadays, but what's What's your path going forward? And do do either of you work on music or, or sound anymore together? No. No. No, the reason why we don't uh, perform as Club Moral anymore was uh, one was because we were all, we always ended up in the wrong kind of place. Oh, are you really done performing with Club Moral? Because I saw you so, not so many years ago at, in Cologne, like I said. Yeah. Which was surprising because I didn't know that you guys were still performing and I was like, wow. Yeah. Well, uh, Anime had a big, had a few big uh, retrospective exhibitions mm -hmm. and they always asked us, uh, but more as a kind of uh, special thing and not really uh, some kind of a, yeah, it was not kind of an attraction. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, was very attractive, yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, and not for the kind. Of, it, it it didn't. The demand was not from the music uh, world, but from the art world. And in the art world, uh, they only wanted it uh, because yeah, it's a, it's like an extreme or it's a very weird aspect mm -hmm. of. Uh, they like to have side side. Um, Side events, and, and then I mean, yeah. I mean, you. We always do a lot of effort. I mean, every concert is different because yeah. you also, uh, you've seen the visuals that we use. The, the visuals, the dates, they are on the day of the. So it's a lot of work. Yeah, for us, it's just not that just uh, we have. I I couldn't bear it anymore. It it was actually a lot of work. In that, yeah, I it's not that we have that just... we, that we're like a regular band and yeah. we have ten hit songs and we play them yeah. and we just set up our gear and we play no it's not like that it's a very a really big conceptual yeah. thing and it takes a lot of work to do it and when when you do this kind of thing and then you have these art people uh, afterwards saying uh -huh, yeah, it's, oh yeah it's special and it's special and i've never seen anything like it uh, yeah. yeah then uh you get you get fed up with it you, you almost get frustrated by by doing spending so much energy yeah. on time is something that you believe in yeah and then you have these people oh that's well special yeah but it's also very frustrating always danny that uh, when you do then a, 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 a sound check and then when the, is the actual show uh, the actual show then they they turn off all the the, the things uh then and that it's not loud enough and yeah. well, i mean that's really in uh, every time it was the same. So uh, we don't uh, accept that anymore, mm -hmm. because then people say, "Oh, it wasn't so good anymore as it was before." Of course not, because these people handling the 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 the, 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 um, mix. the, the mix the mixing and every time and every time we say, "Please leave it like that yeah. and don't touch it," and they always do it. The people from and that's uh, one of the that's so frustrating. 
uh, we only play in really in clubs that are really made for it. Danny? Yeah, or are really. I mean, yeah. One of the last times we we played was in uh, Dresden. There was this guy who does a festival every year mm-hmm. for two days, and that. Uh, but he's like. Uh, was it tower transmission? Yeah. No. yeah, 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 yeah. He's like a real yeah noise yeah. music industrial music yeah. aficionado. Yeah. He works a whole year. Yeah. And he invites the best bands. Yeah. And I mean, uh, okay, 95% of the people dressed in black. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and, but it's a nice atmosphere. And they appreciate it. Oh, oh, there's, oh, uh, Splendor Geometrico. Oh, it is. Yeah. And that's a nice atmosphere. Yeah. And also, 97% of the people come to hear yeah. that yeah. because they love it, because yeah. they want it. Yeah. And that's the, the, the kind of thing. But yeah. For some reason, it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't happen. Would you be open to playing more events like that? If okay, it, I know it's still a lot of work and energy, but but if it's a good if it's a good uh, atmosphere, uh, yeah, maybe. I mean, I, how would I like broken flowers and never say no? The yeah. broken flag thing was also good. How was that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I I wasn't there for, for because we 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 uh, uh, we did something between all the, the noise bands and we did something that nobody expected right because we did something totally different i mean you can see the whole performance on youtube yes yeah. uh with the flowers you mean yeah, yeah. the flowers and, and the water. water yeah and the thing with the flowers i uh, just before the concert i went for a walk and i saw this flower stall and i bought the flowers yeah. not not even knowing what i was going to do with it yeah. so it was a really also like a performance actually that was the the concert was made during the concert. Yeah, there were a few things that that were that were decided before, but uh, I mean, and that's yeah. And of course, everybody thought, "Wow, wow what is this?" Uh, and that was like when when we started in the eighties. People would also say, "Oh, whoa, what's this?" Yeah, my. It's that's not that, that we we have to have that content. And oh, I'm by one wall, what's this? But you know, but I mean, you have to get, have a good atmosphere that people say, oh, what is this? This is so amazing. We've never seen anything like it. Or well, we are, uh, but that, yeah, you have to have a good atmosphere to, to make something good. Yeah, that's true. How do you feel about what has become of something you guys were part of? pioneering and I assume you didn't really know oh we're making you were just doing something that was an extension of your art and your ideas and your performance but you know this has become a, a genre a movement there's been waves there's been you know power electronics and industrial has evolved and it's still very strong today how do you feel about the current iteration of it or or it's current existence. Do you feel a connection to it? In my opinion, uh, with all the, the possibilities that, that you have now in your computer or even in your phone, uh, I think uh, the creative input has is getting very low. There's more people uh, that, that say, uh, oh, uh, that's really nice. I'm going to do something like that also. That was much less in in the in the early times, of course, and it's also like uh, one of the reasons why we stopped doing force mental because people were sending in things that looked like things that had been in force mental because they were going to also do something like that, and then we will also be. But when it's better, it's okay. When it's better, when it's good, yeah. when. But I mean, better are as good, but some about it. Anyway, you can feel it immediately when you hear something like that, and when it's boring, yes. then when it's boring, it's boring, you know, then it's yeah. not good. And it, and so, yeah. also, when it's like two people having fun on stage, so, I mean, uh, yeah, that's also good, but with yeah, but yeah, 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 the result, I think I have to yeah, yeah. Yeah. We we saw going we, back and forth. we we have been going the last years to Desert Fest, you know, you know, Desert Fest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and sometimes we heard like very good. Now it's it's some time ago. It's like but, a Doom Desert Rock. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In Belgium? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a festival. Here. It's also in Berlin. Oh, okay. It's also yeah, in London. In London. 
It's fantastic. I mean, it used to be fantastic. And sometimes we heard things with yeah. noise yeah. elements that were great. Yeah. And it's or not so I mean, three, yeah. three, four years I mean, before Corona, actually. Yeah. 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 Or also in in the in the in the mashup uh, scene and so, or this yeah. kind of electronic music like uh, the Prodigy and and Fat Boy Slim and so, mm-hmm. they were also heavily influenced on the uh, on the early uh, industrial sure. and, uh, which is of course good and and like I mean the Prodigy it's I mean that's really good yeah. or. But, but uh, when there's noise uh, bands playing, we go there. I mean, when we can, when we can. Yeah. You, you know, probably in the door of T- Dennis Stevens here. Do you know that? Uh, say again? Yeah, it's, it's Dennis Stevens is playing here. Um, I mean, he has he's some kind of a venue next to a, in in a, in a, next to Antwerp. In, okay. in, but but actually, you are the, most of the the noise thing, the noise things that you hear there are nearly. You are, it's not re- really original. Yeah, it, it's it's not question of being original, but it has to be entertaining as well. Mm-hmm. Or you have to you have to feel that it's not like invented on the spot. Or you understand? Right. You can yeah. you can tell when people know what they're doing or just like. Uh, yeah, and messing around, yeah. and uh, yeah. of course with this this kind of music you hear it. I mean, yeah. it's the only thing you can. It's it's very intimate, intimate related to the kind of music you know, I mean, the kind of uh, thing performance, and uh, you hear immediately when there's not nothing behind or yeah. get it gets gets boring or too loud or doing pain in your ears without any. Yeah, uh, no. I mean. When you don't have anything to say, then don't say it. Right. Yeah. It's, I think it's okay that do, they do it for fun, but yeah, um, it, there has to be something more than it. As on the fun. I usually like to ask my guests towards the end. I surprise them with a question to ask me to, to tell me that they're top, like noise and experimental records of all time. But what I would like to do. Also, and I know you also are, are fans of like pop and rock music. And I s- saw through your performances, and I know through. Oh, what is Carl Carl Kreitland, by the way? Carl Kreitland is like an uh, alternative uh, personality who started out as a DJ, making a team. Uh, I st- I I did it for like entertainment in a car, so make a compilation of music that was about cars. Uh-huh. And then I, I change it into the Carl Kraplund, uh person, like I have the DJ says yeah. on, on my website. And they're like teams. And I started uh, publishing them sort of like podcasts in, in, yeah. in, in the early days when podcasts started. I started distributing, but nobody knew it was me. Yeah. And I got, yeah. I've got people say, oh, yeah, stop sending me this. You're really sick. I saw the list of like responses and I saw most people, but, but I also know there's one HKSO, which is Christian Olsen, right? Maybe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Christian Olsen yeah. from Alpha Mini, who I know is a good fan of, of you guys and yeah. maybe you're in contact. I don't know. He wrote back, oh, I love it or something like that. But like, I was just looking through the responses. Everyone was saying, stop, stop, stop. And then it was like, HKSO, like, that's Christian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So. But I, yeah, I, I just do that for fun. What are you? Uh, something I, I still do. Uh, I mean, I did a DJ set with music for covers on uh, last summer when Anime had a big, uh, big work for a new museum that's built in Brussels and it's in an old garage. So I did a DJ set about covers because I, yeah, I mean, I, I like it, but. Very few people ask me to do a DJ set. What are your five favorite pop songs of all time? Uh, all the top of your head. Yeah, we, uh, we, but, it's different day eh, from me, me from him, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You mean really pop music, not... Uh, Could be rock and roll, but outs, uh, yeah. it, let's not get into anything experimental. Uh, okay. Uh, Five, yeah, that's uh, difficult to get on a line. 
Was it maybe I should start? Yeah, sure. Yeah, like, uh, I, of course, I start like the strange effect from Dave Barry, mm-hmm. and it's a uh, song of the kings mm-hmm. and the strange effect, and then on the road again, and and um, wait a minute, uh, uh, stink foot. No, don't you eat that yellow snow, Frank Zappa? Uh, <laughs> no, it's a long time ago, and I think about you all the time of Per Hupu. Mm-hmm. And then a fifth one, there's there's a lot of them, you know. Maybe Strawberry Fields for Henry. Very good. Very That's good. It. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I think the first record that I bought was Alice Cooper. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'd say I'm 18 from Alice Cooper. Cool. Because it's <laughs> when it begins. A little Yeah. Probably something uh, David Bowie, but I would be looking being part to one because I've seen I, I went to a concert mm. in old like in seventy six. Choose one because David Bowie has such a wide wide yeah. wide category. That's yeah, where, but I went in seventy six and I, and I went in seventy eight, and then after that I didn't mm. like it. Mm. Think station to station. That album mm-hmm. was the last one that I really uh, liked. Um, which is a good song, actually. Yeah, station to station. station. Uh, yeah, and then yeah, from the sixties, uh, I like a lot of uh, these girl uh, bands from the sixties, like the Shirelles, uh, the whatever. Ronettes. The Ronettes, yeah, stuff like that. Uh, or like a leader of the pack. Yeah. That, but there's not really one favorite. There's, right, right, right. Uh, it's just that, that genre of the wall of sound. It was a great, I mean, there were formulas. Yeah. There were great formulas that yeah. made many, many songs. And yeah, and, uh, this song or this song or this song or this song yeah. is, is uh, about the same. Uh, or, yeah. Then you have Robert E. Five with Annie. Any? No? Yeah. And this is the one you got to know from me, uh, like uh, Kevin Ayers. You like it. Yeah, Soft Machine. You're on a swing. Yeah. 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 No. Of course, Soft Machine, yeah. Maybe. But, but that's not pop. That's, that's that... not pop. <laughs> no, yeah. But uh, Kevin Ayers is pop. Eh? Why are we sleeping? You know that was song? Oh, that's Soft Machine. Is that also Soft Machine? Yeah. So not just Machine. Sure. Kevin Ray, the old lady Rachel. Lady yeah, Rachel, I yeah, guess, super. Is and girl on the swing. Yeah, I mean, it's my turn. I know, but, 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 you know, I, <laughs> and then, yeah, the the the, the early uh, new wave, uh, like Talking Heads or mm-hmm. B52s, mm-hmm. uh, Psycho Killer. Yeah. Of course, uh, uh, Rock Lobster. Planet Claire is also. Yo, and then he Yeah, yeah, but Good. maybe it's from. That's yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Do you guys like to dance? I like to dance. I never. That I mean. never dances. Only when he's a DJ. Yeah. Then you dance. That you could see. They think that's kind of a dance. <laughs> yeah. Now, how long have we been together? From right, from right. Yeah, uh, 1980, 44 years. Nice. I like that. <laughs> and are we not now you together? Oh, with my wife? Yeah. Well, it's seven years. It's also yeah. a good start. Yeah. Yeah. Well, is there anything else you'd like to mention or, or let the people know about yeah. before, we, before we close off? I could talk to you about so much more stuff, but I don't want to take too much of your time. And I think, you know. It was nice that you, you, uh, are interested in us? A lot of people are interested in you, and I and I, yeah. um, you know, I encourage you to stay open to that because there are, yeah, for sure, different sides of probably you know your work, and you have such a involvement in the art world. And I think I'm pretty critical of that world. I think there's a lot of yes crap in there, but I think um, you know there's a very dedicated, maybe not. <laughs> 
a very dedicated fan base of for industrial and, and noise music um that really just takes it very seriously and very you know really appreciates mm -hmm. it in its current forms and also like the 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 historic roots of it and like the early stuff yes. um so you guys are very much loved in that uh, very small yes uh group maybe maybe you could start like some kind of a um, thing, uh, thing in in Potsdam, you know, and invite. In I don't know. I mean, I, eh? I'm hoping. Yeah. To continue, the thing is, the podcast. I do it. I don't know if you've been aware of it, but I mostly I'm only able to do it on video call because, mm. like this, like it's such a small, like you mentioned, like one percent of your audience was in Antwerp and the rest yeah, was yeah. in everywhere else. So it's you know, there's no real budget to go everywhere. Unfortunately, I thought, well, okay, I want to come here because it's not far, but. Yeah. I'm hoping that in Potsdam, with the closeness to Berlin, Berlin is a city where people come to often and are, yes. there's, there is a scene there. It there is are, scene. There's yes. a scene. I'm not going to start booking shows because I can't stand doing that, but I'm hoping maybe to establish a little studio. Inspire people. To... Yeah, 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 exactly. So um, yeah. I, I hope, um, you know, I hope you guys perform again also. No, I, I do too. <laughs> Actually, yeah. 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 Well, thank you very much. Yeah. yeah, the thing is that because there's there's so much actually there's so much information available about the time because there were a lot of when we did force rental there were a lot of other uh, fanzines, right. uh, Xerox uh, magazines. Uh, you have Color who had their magazine. You have plenty. Uh, I know like David Minshall, he had also interviews. Uh, there's so much material, and I think it's now it's about time that it goes into. There, there has been this book works, of course, by this French guy. But are you hungry? Would you like to eat? Oh, I mean, something. Maybe we can talk about that in a little bit. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Thank you. No, but I think I, 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 I agree that there, there, there's a need to archive and continue there, this. There's, I think, also for like. Uh, I mean, real research yeah. historians yeah. should start doing things like, because I mean, we're still alive. Exactly. Exactly. And, I, and that's, that's, you know, in my own small way, I, that's what I want to do with this, you know, these interviews. Like, I think uh, these pe artists like you and many, many others are so important and there's really so little about them and us, even the new ones and like, there are zines that come out or whatever, but these things are now collector's items that you can't yeah. find. And, you know, I think these things need to be continually, I think, reissued and somehow digitized. I mean, there's a difference between a, a real book and PDFs online. Yeah. I think keeping, I mean, you know, I, I know you did a repress of Force Mental not so long ago or some, some, year, some yeah. years ago, but it's also out of print, right? I mean, it's... Yeah. Food. I think those things should be kept, and I'm, someone needs to do some real yeah. writing and, and documenting yeah, and all for of us, the proper was we did we did 100 and we did five reprints yeah. of that. So there's also been 500, uh, but now I think it's it's uh, it's uh, it's also like a, a rather big investment uh, to print to yeah print, yeah because it's uh, it's Xerox and bound and yeah I mean but I still just I just think of all this stuff that. 20 years ago or 30 years ago, 40 years ago, whatever, in the 80s or 90s or whatever, when people did it, they thought, oh, 50 copies is enough for my friends, and then we we're just doing something for us. But like, then 20 years later, people are still fascinated by it, but it's just, you know, and think about 50 years or 100 years. I mean, think about the art that exists now that has a more potential for maybe larger audiences. It's documented continuously. I mean, like art books and things like this, you know about them then museums but not a lot of people give this art that thing so it, it needs to be preserved and saved i mean there's 500 people isn't that's not a lot of people on earth i mean no but that's a that's more on this limit you know i did uh, this book about my performance yeah which i, I did you ever see it it's not really uh sorry uh like they say coffee table yeah book. no i haven't seen that <laughs> and uh I was, I was uh, a bit ambitious, of course, so I printed oh. a thousand. Well, there's still 400. Yeah, yeah but you know, I mean, I know. And it's very hard to, to uh, 
distribute. Yes. I know taking, I know it, it, it's an investment to do, but yeah. it's not bad to have things still available because yeah. then someone will, you know, find it eventually. And it's good for that things to not be directly sold out or unavailable, you know? Yeah. Wow. Basically. Is this the original Club Morale? No, this was uh, somewhere in, in a factory in Ghent. Okay. But we always a projection. made no, it's painting. Oh, wow. it's wall painting. Wow. We also made uh, wall paintings or wood papers on wall. Then. Brown it. Beautiful book. Yeah, I'll have it. Well, thank you both so much for yeah, having me and uh, appreciate it very much. Positive, 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 low.